What is going on everybody? So I'm back today to talk about another 2023 release. This is a movie that I was very excited to watch when I saw the trailer for it. I think I saw this trailer play a few times in the theater before a couple of movies that I watched. And this is a film that was put out by Neon Pictures, one that was like, you know, it had all the taglines of like, this is one of the most unsettling films you'll ever see those type of things and then you get online and read the reviews and it's people saying nothing happens in this movie it's so boring there's nothing going on that's what happens when art house horror films are released the general audiences are not going to enjoy them but i was really interested to see it because in the realm of like a film like skin of Marink, more like analog horror or horror that is paying an homage to a different era which clearly this film is doing i was really excited to see what it had to offer and the movie i'm going to be discussing today is ennis main ennis main is directed by mark jenkin a wildlife volunteer on an uninhabited island off the british coast descends into a terrifying madness that challenges her grip on reality and pushes her into a living nightmare so as I said, when I watch this movie, the reviews are kind of all over the place. The way people have perceived the material is kind of all over the place. Didn't really know what to expect. I really loved this movie a lot. This is not going to be a film for general audiences. It's even a film that I could see a lot of critical reception being a little bit like all over the place, especially because a lot of people get caught up in the fact that the director said in interviews that when he approached this film that he knew aesthetically how the film, how he wanted the film to look, but didn't necessarily necessarily have an overarching theme or particular message that he was trying to get across but more in so crafting this like aesthetic and ambiance that the film is going for ended up building some sort of thin narrative through line with the film so as the plot description says we're introduced to this woman she's living on an island and she goes out every single day checks these flowers to make sure nothing's going on with them she drops a rock into a well comes back into her house starts a generator makes herself some tea and just lives out her day-to-day -day life and she, there's a young girl who's living in the house with her and she's going through the same day-to-day -day. and in the background we're getting little bits of information we're told this very interesting story through these series of radio segments that she's listening to that kind of give this film a very folk horror vibe in my opinion just with the type of lore that it seems to be building and as the film progresses the uh, strange unsettling things start happening to the lead character and that's about it that's the entire hour and a half runtime of the movie and I'll start by saying Obviously, the first thing to talk about in this film is the cinematography. It is absolutely incredible what Mark Jenkin was able to pull off in this film. It looks like something straight from the 70s. Super rough around the edges. The filmmaking technique, just the grain on the film, it feels so much a product of that era. The fact that it was shot in this time period is mind-blowing to me. Just the genuine authenticity that the film has and the intentionality behind all of the shots in this movie it is such an unsettling experience because at the beginning it doesn't necessarily have the most uncomfortable or tense vibe but as the film goes on and you understand the lead character's isolation and like what she is relying on to continue to survive on this island by herself while she's co um, completing this task that she has been assigned to complete it just starts building up that tension more and more and a lot of that is also in part to the absolutely incredible sound design in this film that is so unsettling and puts you on the edge of your seat throughout the movie because it is just so many strange and unique pieces of sound that really just kind of send your mind all over the place and then familiar sounds that through the character's routine and the beginning of the film continue to play throughout the movie but they kind of get skewed or changed in a way that certain sounds Sounds that may have provided comfort in the first act of the film really kind of shift towards the middle part and make you feel a very different type of way. I've noticed majority of the complaints about this movie are the thin narrative structure and there is a very thin narrative. Obviously you have this person completing this task, there's weird sort of supernatural things in, lots of shots that you kind of have to piece together in your mind what they could mean of like men down in these mines, you have these like nuns standing around her, a priest, uh, all these different characters that show up. They 
they get no information as to why they're there other than you can associate it in my head you associate it with the radio stories that she's listening to and the, the information through those where you're hearing things about um, events that are occurring around the island and things that may have happened and in my head I care so little about the narrative in this film I care so much more about the aesthetic and the ambiance that it's creating it felt like a really interesting ghost story it really did just like the way that it plays out it's so simple and what it's trying to accomplish but it does so with such a technical precision that i was enthralled when people are saying that this is boring and almost impossible to get through it just makes me think that most of this younger generation or new film generation has no attention span because like even skinamarink i know a lot of people had a hard time with the pacing of that movie and it's definitely slower paced than this movie was but there's such an intentionality to it and it's so interesting watching what's going to happen and when certain new things are unveiled it i was glued to the screen the entire runtime of this film i'm not 100 percent sure what the biggest issues that people had with this movie other than everyone wants everything spelled out 100% for them. And the thing is, I can understand even having the qualm that there's not enough narrative structure for you to attach yourself onto, but I think the ambiance and atmosphere that this film creates is so haunting and unique and unlike anything I've really watched in recent memory, Skinamarink did a great job because its source material is very grounded in personal experience. This just feels like something that the director was formulating as he's filming the movie and just created this really unique atmosphere that I truly love reminiscent of like you know ideas that David Lynch had when he created Eraserhead and that movie has a narrative structure it has a lot of themes that you can unpack under the surface but at the end of the day it's still a nightmarish movie that just watching it and experiencing it at face value is enjoyable and that's the thing I liked about Ennis Main is that at surface level it's truly just a really well put together really well well shot beautiful sound design and it just really kind of stuck in my brain and after I finished watching it I thought about revisiting it immediately because of just how immersive and unique the style and presentation of this movie was and as I said this is not gonna be for everyone most people will probably say like oh it's really boring oh nothing happens but for someone like me who really loves films that convey a really unique and specific type of atmosphere this movie really unsettled me I thought it was really well put together and I enjoyed it a lot. Have you seen Ennis Main? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was really great. I enjoyed the pacing. I thought the cinematography was great. I thought the sound design was fantastic and I really look forward to watching it again. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.